This is Dan, and this is the Napkin Academy. This lesson is letter number two within the squid. This is Q, which we remember stands for quality or quantity. The decision we need to make here as we're using our imagination is whether we want to describe what something feels like or if we want to describe how we would measure it. So that's the difference between a qualitative idea and a quantitative idea. So let me give you an example. Now, for example, let's say we were thinking about, uh, let's say I wanted to give you a diamond. I wanted to give you a very beautiful diamond. And qualitatively, what can we think about this diamond? Well, we can think that it's really bright, it's really beautiful, it's really lovely. Perhaps, if I was feeling particularly generous, I might even give you a diamond ring. Wouldn't that be something? And you might think, oh my gosh, look how beautiful that ring is. And you would feel good about it because the qualities of a diamond are so spectacular. But what would happen if I gave you some quantitative information about what I'd actually just given you? Because it turns out that a real diamond is nothing but 100% carbon. But look at the thing that I just gave you. Under a microscope, we're going to find out that it's actually 70% silicon. It's going to be about 16% sodium. It's got a little bit of calcium in there. What is it that I've given you? Have I given you a diamond? No, I've given you glass. What does it feel like? How can I measure? That's the difference between qualitative and quantitative. Let's try another one. Let's say in this case I was thinking about what does it feel like to get out on the water on a sailboat out in the waves and the wind is blowing and that sailboat is being pulled along and I'm on the back and I'm steering that and it's just magnificent. I'm sailing around, the sun is there, the clouds are blowing, the wind is pushing me along and I'm getting spray in my face. The feeling of sailing. Oh, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to have? Well, let's think about measuring that for a moment because in order to achieve that, what I need to do is I need to create something that's this tall, this long, weighs and displaces about that amount, has these kinds of calculations associated with sail area. So again, the difference between the quality, what does it feel like, and the quantity, how do I need to measure it? Let's do one more. You know, what is one of the things that is the utmost when we really want to represent the quality of something, when we want to really talk about feeling? Well, what would happen if we wanted to try to represent, here we go, love. Oh my gosh, what if we really wanted to represent love? Oh my gosh, what our little hearts are just going, you know? What talk about a feeling? Well, okay, so let's talk about how we might quantify that. Well, it turns out that in our brain, what's actually happening is various chemicals are moving in various amounts and we can actually measure them. What happens when we're feeling love? Turns out that blood levels go up. Um, and let's look a little bit more in detail because what actually happens is uh, dopamine goes up through the roof, uh, oxytocin goes up through the roof, all kinds of chemicals go up, and now we've got a nice way to be able to measure the numbers of what it means to actually feel something. So again, we've got both the qualitative way to describe it and the quantitative way to describe it, and both are entirely legitimate. Both are equally real. And when it comes to the kinds of decisions that we make in business, we like to believe that we make things based on this quantitative basis, and that's why we need to have such good quantitative analysis. But let's be honest, there's an awful lot of feeling that goes on in what we do in business as well. So this brings us to the question of when would we want to use a qualitative drawing? When would we want to describe the qualities of our idea versus when might we want to describe the quant? of our idea, the things that we can measure. When might we want to describe the feeling versus when might we want to describe the measurement? And let's think about that. Well, we would want to use qualitative images. We would want to use qualitative thinking when we want to literally appeal to someone's emotions. When we want to appeal to the emotional, to the kind of the irrational. When we want someone to say, you know what? 
That is a great idea. Yes, please. Can we do that? Let's do that thing. Oh, yeah, hey, that idea right over there? Yes, please, can we do that one? That's when we want to show the qualitative idea. What is it going to feel like? What kind of uh, impact is it going to have upon us in terms of our, our happiness or our sadness or uh, getting things done more quickly, what have you. And if we want to try to convince someone then on a rational level, on a measurable level, well, by definition, that's when we want to make a quantitative view. That's when we got to want to go all out make our charts and go ahead and pull out our numbers. It's not so much about just yes please, but now it's about well, okay, uh, why not? This is one again we've put on our numbers hats and we're getting quite serious and we're contemplating. Hmm, we're thinking, well, why not? So when we want to appeal to someone to say yes, let's do it, Let's go ahead with our qualitative image. When we want to say to someone, well, why not? What might be the fiscal impact? Let's really think this through. Then, of course, we go with the quantitative view. I think two more examples are in order, one of which is going to be purely about what does something feel like, almost how do we dream of something. And the other one is going to be how do we actually make it happen. So let's think about uh, you know something that humans have wanted to do for a long time, which is just to fly. And, you know, if we think about some of the original uh, drawings of Leonardo, you know, what was it that people were imagining? People were imagining what might it be like to just soar like a bird? What would be the feeling of flying off into those clouds, soaring off into the sky? I mean, what a magnificent dream to then be able to look back at the ground below. What a fantastic feeling. What a qualitative description of flying. But the reality says that when it comes to flying, when we try to do it, it turns out that much of it is all about measurement. And so we build our machines and our systems that enable us to say, as we're going about doing this miraculous aspect of getting off the ground, what is it that we're actually measuring? Well, we need to measure our speed, and we need to measure our altitude, and we need to measure the direction that we're going. And, you know, the, both are the reality. We may want to jump up into the air and fly, and that would be lovely, but we would die. So at the, at the other side is we have to then be say, say, in order to be safe, in order to make this something we can actually do, what are all the mechanisms that we need to be able to measure it? Business example now of something similar. Let's face it, for a long, long time, we've had computers. And, you know, our computers have been fine. And in the past, we've tended to input information into our computers through a keyboard and then this amazing little breakthrough that allow us to input information through a mouse. And then, of course, we got to the point where we started to say, well, wouldn't it be interesting if we could have computers uh, that we could actually draw on? And in fact, this is what I'm using today. This is a tablet PC. And, and we could take our pen, and we can actually draw right on the screen, which is exactly what I'm doing with you now. Well, that's kind of a nice feeling, wouldn't it be, to say, Let's break out of the constraints of a keyboard and a mouse and go ahead and be able to use a pen. Well, you know, then someone else had an idea and said, let's take that vision even further. Wouldn't it be great if we could eliminate all of those input devices completely and just end up using our finger? Wouldn't that be incredible if we could draw and interact with our machine just using our finger? But I've got to tell you, you know, that's a nice qualitative view that many people have had. And for a long time, there was a push to say that tablet PCs, the ability to draw on the screen, would be great. And of course, we know what's happened lately with the arrival of uh, the iPad and the new, the new types of tablets. But the fact is, the reason why it took so long to get to this wasn't so much about the technology. It was about the fact that if you were to plot out the numbers of sales from 2005, let's get into our quantities now, from 2005 to 2009, if you were to make a plot that showed number of sales of tablet PCs, you would see after the first tablets came out, there was a little jump in sales. This is total PC sales, and then it just held flat. And in fact, then it started to go down. And it was this point that people said, see, tablet PCs, the idea of actually taking a pen and drawing on your screen, is a failure. It is a complete failure. If we look at it from a quantitative perspective, there's never been a business case made. And if you look at the numbers, if you look at the numbers, tablets are a failure. 
But you know what? There was someone who didn't believe that, said the problem is how they've been done. I want this to be the feeling. I want the freedom and absolute feeling of mastery that I have by just using my finger on a computer that has nothing else between me and the screen. And of course the iPad was launched in spite of the abysmal numbers about tablet PCs. What happened? Let's take a look. Back in the year 2008, here were total PC sales. And you can see that there was Dell and HP and Acer and Apple and Toshiba. And Apple was going along here, kind of along the bottom, bumping along. And then all of a sudden something changed, because at exactly this point, the iPad was launched. And look what happened to the sales of Apple computers. Look what happened to the sales of Apple computers. And in parallel, look what happened to the sales of everyone else's computer. I'll tell you what, the numbers now show a completely different story. The point is we need to have both the qualitative view, what is it that it's going to feel like, and then we need to have the numbers that support us that prove that there was value. We need to have both. And so as we close out squid part number two, the question of course is do I want to draw a picture that shows the quality of my idea or the quantity of my idea? Which one do I want to draw? I'd like you to think about that from the perspective of your example. So again, did you decide to draw an orange? Did you decide to draw a computer? Or did you decide to draw a car? Whatever it is, I want you to now make two more drawings. And this time, I want you to draw one drawing that describes the feeling, the qualities, the thing that make this thing so wonderful. And on the other side, I want you to draw a picture that shows some measure of what makes that thing so amazing. Go ahead. Hey, thank you all for another great lesson. This is Dan signing off from the Napkin Academy, but don't go away. Now on our new platform, you can still submit your homework. Debbie, our community manager, is going to join you right now to show you exactly how to do that, and I really encourage you do your homework. Okay, take it away, Debbie. See you soon. We hope you enjoyed this Napkin Academy classic video. We've made it easier than ever to share your homework. After you've completed your homework and have a JPEG or PNG file saved on your computer, come back to this course. Once you're back here, scroll to the bottom of the screen, and in the comments box, you can add a comment. I'm just going to call this one my homework. You can also add images by clicking on the Insert Edit Image button here. In the source box, click on the file. In the images window, click on upload. And then click on add files. This is going to take you to your computer where you can search for your images. I'm just going to search for mine in pictures. And I'm going to choose this image here. You can also add multiple images here. Click upload. After the upload is complete, click close. Then scroll down and you'll see that the last image is here and it's checked. This is the one we just uploaded. Click insert. I suggest in the dimensions box you change the maximum to 1200 pixels and leave the constrained proportions box checked. You can also add an image description here if you'd like. Click OK. You'll see that your image has been added to your comment. And now the last step, the most important one, make sure that you click the green comment button here to upload your homework to the Napkin Academy. We hope to see your homework soon.